Hi, Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising, and hey, today we've got five strategic fundraising calendar tips for all you experts out there because right now is the time that you want to strengthen your fundraising strategy with assistance and assessments from experts in the field. And you want to take on the challenge of improving your nonprofit's fundraising strategy. Although this has got to seem daunting, but after all, it can be tough to keep track of all the moving parts of your organization and even tougher to help guide them to work together. So if you want to try to get ahead, and I know you do, try improving your fundraising efforts by designing a nonprofit fundraising calendar. So now with this tool in hand, you're going to have you're, you're going to better understand the big picture yourself of your fundraising strategy and that gives you the power to implement improvements across all levels of your organization. So, are you ready right now to build a strategic comprehensive fundraising calendar for your nonprofit? Well, here are the five tips that are going to help you get going. You want to align your calendar with your fundraising strategy. You want to plan your fundraising calendar with data. You're going to determine hard deadlines. You're going to provide teams with fundraising calendar access and you're going to avoid fundraising overlap. So your nonprofit's perfect fundraising calendar is only a few steps away. So let's dive right now into more detail. First things first, align your calendar with your fundraising strategy. Hey, your fundraising calendar is not just for marking down dates. It should be an extension of your nonprofit's overall fundraising strategy that is both a guide and a blueprint. When designing your calendar, you want to use it to reflect the priorities of your organization. If your nonprofit is focusing on a particular area of improvement, you want to weave those ambitions throughout your calendar. You want to reflect the priorities of your organization in your fundraising calendar. Your fundraising calendar should be reconfigured every time your nonprofit makes changes to its fundraising strategy. For this reason, it's most important for you to closely align the calendar into your fundraising over the first year or two of a big change in strategy. This is when your nonprofit lays the groundwork for future fundraising and you don't want to lose focus. You can keep your nonprofit on track by setting deadlines for goals. It's difficult to see a goal as tangible if you do not know its endpoint. You can set clear definitive deadlines for all of your goals in your calendar. This way your team members can see how much time they have left to help reach the goal, preventing that, well, maybe someday attitude. You want to schedule your strategy check-in dates. Your strategy does not have to be a fixed, unchanging rule book. Your strategy should be flexible and your calendar should feature set check-in dates where you can take the time to evaluate how well the strategy is working. If changes need to be made, then you can correct course. Build goals upwards. Give each of your departments smaller, more tailored goals that they can achieve in the short term. Then use these goals to get you closer to your broader fundraising goals. For example, a communications department may, might aim to increase your call to action click throughs, which could lead to increased donations. You want to set goals for your events. Similarly, you should also set smaller goals that tie in with events on your calendar. This can help you plan out steps towards carrying out an event, as well as help keep event planning on track. An event goal, for instance, might be to mail so many number of constituents with an invitation. 
an event reminder for your fundraising calendar. And the takeaway here is aligning your calendar with your fundraising strategy lets you take a big picture look at your fundraising efforts and allows you to take a step-by-step -step approach to achieving your goals. You want to plan your fundraising calendar with data. You wouldn't set your fundraising strategy without consulting data to back it up. So why would you plan your fundraising calendar without it? When designing your calendar, you need to look into your past data to help set effective dates for your nonprofit's activities. If your organization keeps detailed records of when certain tasks were accomplished or when events were held, you can assess how these activities performed over time. A data analysis graphic comparing fundraising metrics year over year. Perfect. A bonus tip with the help of nonprofit software solutions, it has never been easier to collect useful fundraising data to help you better plan your fundraising calendar. And by analyzing the past data. Nonprofits can better schedule activities. Some things to keep in mind when evaluating your past data include your slow fundraising periods. Some times of years are tough for fundraising. For example, summer is generally a slow time for fundraising. Design your calendar to avoid your slow periods or supplement them with more fundraising during historically successful periods. Your annual events. Does your organization hold annual events? Do you tend to hold fundraisers around the same time each year? Well, your constituents might expect fundraisers to come at certain times of year, and your data should guide your calendar in implementing a fixed event schedule. Event performance. Do certain events or fundraisers perform better than others? By evaluating performance data, you can pick and choose the types of events that you hold by seeing what worked for your nonprofit in the past. You can evaluate performance using metrics like retention rates, number of donations, event attendance. Takeaway here is when drafting your fundraising calendar, leverage your existing data to help schedule activities. You can use the data to pick event dates as well as plan what types of events to hold. Next, you want to determine hard deadlines for your fundraising calendar. Maintaining hard deadlines can ensure that your nonprofit runs efficiently and stays on track with your fundraising strategy. Keeping a comprehensive fundraising calendar can help you enforce these hard deadlines as well as strategize how you set them. You should set hard deadlines for a variety of activities. Ready? Events. You should plan out your event schedule well in advance and select dates for them in reference to the rest of your event lineup. Additionally, set deadlines for every step of the event planning process to keep yourself on track. Next, your annual campaigns. Similarly, you should set hard deadlines for every step of your annual campaigns. These are this is your big push for donations, so you need to make sure that you benefit from them as much as possible. Milestones. Throughout the year, set milestones to help you assess your fundraising strategy. For example, at the end of quarter one, you can set a fundraising goal to let you track the progression of your fundraising for the year so far. Hey, if you're moving slower than normally, then you need to know that and improvements need to be made. Next, board and budget meetings. Setting deadlines for board and budget meetings also helps keep your nonprofit on track. If there are any issues that need to be addressed, getting together with your team will help bring problems to light. Additionally, 
with everyone in the room, it's easier to come to a quick solution. Hard deadlines should also be used in conjunction with monthly goals. If your January objective is to increase end-of-year donor retention, in December you should set deadlines for stewardship activities. So the takeaway here is, not only do hard deadlines act as a motivator, but they also help break down larger goals into more manageable short-term tasks. Next, provide your teams with fundraising calendar access. Fundraising calendars are not just helpful tools for those in charge of the big picture planning in your nonprofit. They're also useful, very useful for team members across your entire organization. You should make your fundraising calendar accessible to everyone, especially those who head your different departments. You want your team members to be able to see how their work fits in with everyone else's and how their efforts are getting you closer to achieving long-term goals. To improve calendar accessibility for your team members, you might try using an online calendar. There are so many online calendar options out there that would allow you to share deadlines and events with your entire staff. In particular, a Google Calendar works well for sharing a calendar across a single network. A CRM some CRM options offer calendar tools to their users. Using a CRM's calendar function is also very convenient since you can use data that you've collected in the CRM to help you plan out your fundraising activities. You might want to check out Double the Donations Guide to CRMs for some expert CRM software recommendations. You want a calendar matrix. A calendar matrix is an efficient way to show the delegation of tasks among departments for your specific fundraising events and campaigns. Unlike a regular calendar, a calendar matrix only shows days where deadlines need to be met and includes strategic information related to the task at hand. So you want to use a fundraising matrix to delegate tasks among your nonprofit. The takeaway here is the more team members who have access to your fundraising calendar, the better. Be sure to clearly delegate tasks and show your organization how each department factors into achieving the various goals. Lastly, avoid fundraising overlap with your calendar. One of the most important things that fundraising calendars help you avoid is fundraising overlap. There is nothing worse than a donor who has yet to be thanked for their last gift receiving another ask. With a fundraising calendar, you can keep track of your different campaigns as well as the donor life cycle. When you are aware of when campaigns are happening in relation to one another, you can better plan out when to ask donors for their support. If you segment donors, and I hope you do, you can avoid asking for gifts too frequently, or you might use donor segments to see who to send donor thank you letters to and for what you should be thanking them. Your nonprofit might segment individuals by recent donors, major donors, new donors, planned donors, event attendees. On your fundraising calendar, you can stay aware of what events, campaigns, or donor outreach initiatives that you are holding and which segments are involved. This really helps you personalize your donor engagement which in the end will make your donors more likely, so much more likely, to continue to give to your organization. So the takeaway here is with your fundraising calendar, you can better manage your donor segments by keeping track of your nonprofit's campaign. You can stay on top of who you've engaged with and know when to refrain from asking too frequently. 
Staying on top of your fundraising goals starts with plotting out a detailed timeline. And speaking of detailed timelines, I thought that this particular blog from Bloomerang might be a really good help for you right now for your annual campaign. Let's take a look. Bloomerang points out is we must plan the core of our campaign and they give us this wonderful sample annual appeal timeline that I thought since we we're talking about calendars this might really be very helpful to take a look at. So we're going to put it up there on the screen. Going to know a lot from this. You're going to know who's going to be doing it and when they're going to be doing it. Okay, we're looking at it. August 1st, we're going to have a brainstorm meeting and we're going to be the theme and the messages. And that's August 1st. August 7th, we're going to create a timeline and draft our segmentation chart. And then August 18th through 23rd, we're going to draft a letter and our remit form. And on August 25th through 30th, we're going to see finalized drafts and we're going to review them. And as you can see, we know who's going to be doing all this. August 28th, we're going to review our segmentation chart. And September 5th, we've got the finalization of the segmentation of the database. So we load in the codes, we create the list of counts per segment, we create spreadsheets for review. Now, on September 8th, we purge our database and review it. This is so important, September 8th. September 11th through the 15th, we talk to our mailhouse. We spec out the job. We talk to the printer. We make sure that we are lined up for the dates that we need to be out of the mailhouse so that we get into the mailbox of our donors on the exact date that we want to be there. And it's getting earlier and earlier. When I came into development 25 years ago, they were saying, you know, be the first letter in the mailbox after Thanksgiving. Now everybody's there before Thanksgiving. Times move are moving much quicker. Okay, so on September 12th, Boomerang suggests that you meet with the designer for finalization. And September 18th through the 29th, you have you run note writer reports and you send to note writers for to review your content. And on September 27th, you meet with your executive director to discuss your final appeal package. September 22nd through October 3rd, you contact all of your note writers regarding how they would like to do the notes. And th this is a lot of personalization and you can, they can come to your place at their convenience. You can have a note writing party. You can write notes for them, but this is personalization, personalization, personalization. Don't wait any longer than this because the holidays are coming up and nobody will want to come in and write those notes. All right, on October 2nd, you request a check to update with the post office. You want to make sure that the post office and the mailhouse, that you're not going to be waylaid, backlog, not get out of there when you want to. And on October 10th, you receive all your lists back from your note writers. If you have to make any changes, you do so then in your database. October 9th through 18th, the printer has all of your print materials printed. October 16th through 20th, you can pull your segments by appeal code. And you do your final segment review. You have your zip file and you send your data to the mailhouse. And if you need to then, between the 16th and the 20th, you run newly updated note writing lists. October 27th, Boomerang says, the mailhouse you deliver, they deliver the prepared items back to you. You set it up in your conference room and you, you make sure <laughs> that everything is perfect. And then October 30th, 
you draft and produce your thank you letters and inserts. November 1 through 2, you assign follow-up calls to your board and development committee members, and you prepare more information for note writers and callers. And on no November 7th, you generate a list of donors who's made, who have made annual gifts since their codes were pulled and you delete that appeal code from their database. November 10th, you drop your bulk segments from the mailhouse. November 17th, you drop your first class segments by taking the envelopes to the post office. November 18th through the 22nd, you write staff appeals, you get labels from human resources, you assemble and distribute, and that is a great annual appeal timeline to give you an idea how you can actually get in and be ready and and you can use this and you can modify it of course for your own use and the core components of your annual appeal planning is you want to brainstorm the theme you want to brainstorm your message and your package elements because this is your opportunity to think about your vision, your mission, and values from the perspective of what truly matters to your constituents. What's in it for them to be invested with you? What areas do they earmark their giving for? What articles of yours do they read and share? What are frequently asked questions? So there's so many things to think about right now, but you know, so, July is a perfect time to get that calendar out and then to get your annual appeal dates on that calendar because autumn is coming. The big, the 30% in December of your entire year's gifts, it makes so much difference to get organized right now. Okay, Joy Olson here, Blockbuster Fundraising, Joy Olson Group. You can find a lot more information at both of our websites. We're on uh, YouTube. We've got our Blockbuster Fundraising channel with over 300 free fundraising video tips. We're here live every Tuesday, 1 uh, p.m. Daylight uh, Standard Time right now, Daylight Standard Time. And we're really enjoying our Instagram IGTV. So catch us, catch us anywhere. We're here to help bring you the best of the best tips, inspiration, just give you information that makes you love your fundraising even more and do better and better each and every week. Bye-bye. Thank you.